and she did her PhD on the history of advertising in Shanghai from a social and spatial history, per uh, history perspective. And this is also accompanied by a research platform, platform uh, madspace.org. And uh, presenting together with her is uh, Nora Vandenbosch, and she's um, the data scientist of the ENP project. Uh, they're both based in X, if I got that correctly, but please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and today they will talk about the um, motivation for building to yeah, China history databases, the MCBD and the LMBD. Um, they will also talk about their data sources and their methods for processing the data and the database architecture and the database public interfaces. Um, and we'll also see um, a demo of their databases. So um, Cecile and Nora, you're, um, you have the stage. Thank you very much for the introduction. So I will share my screen if you, okay. Can you see it? Yes. The full screen, I mean? Yes, now we see the full screen. Okay, great. So thank you very much first for uh, inviting us to present our two, uh, the two databases we have been developing at uh, Ex Marseille University. So I, I will be talking on behalf of a larger team, um, the ENP China project led by uh, Christian Orio, who is here in the, among the audience. Um, so uh, we have been developing two major databases. The first one is the Modern China Biographical Database. And I can say that the first major biographical database devoted to modern China, it can be seen as a continuation of a CBDB. And the Yume Biographical Database, the one that I've been working on, is more specifically focused on the Chinese educated in the United States, the Liu Mei Shusheng, between the mid 19th century and the mid 20th century. So these databases are part of two large projects uh, focusing on the, the, the MCBD focused on the transformation of elites in modern China from the mid 19th century to the mid 20th century. And uh, it is funded by the uh, European Research Council and uh, my own database focused on the role that, uh, of the American educated Chinese in uh, building modern China and building Sino-American relationships. And this project, as you, uh, Tillman said, was, uh, is funded by the Chantinko Foundation. So I will uh, briefly give you uh, an introduction of the database, uh, the context, the aim of the scope of the database, also a brief overview of the sources, and then I will um, let Nora present the architecture of the database and also uh, some idea of, about data linking. And uh, she will make a, a demo so you can understand better how it works. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Okay, sorry. So the, the, the main purpose of these two databases is to create the condition for a change of scale in the quantity and quality of historical information that we are able to retrieve from historical sources, to analyze and to interpret and to make connection between data points and for the study of modern China and the return student. So this means that we do not start from a preconceived definition of who is elite or who is included in the database. So this means that MCBD includes every person who were active in China during the defined period. And this includes uh, foreigners as well. And LMBD includes every person born in China or of Chinese ancestry who studied in the United States. And for this, we use a data-driven approach this means that we include any name mentioned in the massive digitized source corpora that we process with natural language processing tools. Uh, we can, uh, I will not get too many details about this, but we can, you can ask questions in the, in the question session if you want. And an important point I would like to emphasize is that although uh, this is a biographical database, um, this also includes all the institutions, the events, and the locations that are related to the individuals recorded in the database. Um, I will now talk about the sources we use for uh, extracting the data. So the, the first major group of sources we use are biographical dictionaries. 
In fact, we started with this very famous biographical dictionary of Republican China by Howard Bowman. We also use uh, directories and whose who books, particularly the rich collection digitized by the uh, Institute of Modern History that Huimin has presented earlier. Um, and so this include uh, business directories, student directory, and so on. Another major uh, group of sources we use, and I think this made the originality of this project, are newspapers and periodicals, large collections of newspapers, particularly the Shumbo, uh, the progress collections of English language periodicals, and the Dongfang Zaizhi. And we, uh, for my project, more specifically, I also relied on student journals, such as the Chinese Students Monthly, which was uh, the, the largest um, uh, periodical published by Chinese students in the United States. Another important uh, group of sources are data sets shared by uh, a partner project, especially the Lee Campbell Group at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, who have built uh, different data sets, especially the, the Qing government employees data sets and the Chinese university student data set. Uh, we also work with uh, Torben Petzer at the University of Leipzig, who has built a, a big database of Chinese engineers um, during this period. And this is another important source. Uh, we also relied on Wikipedia in Chinese and English and Baidu. So we try to extract the biographies of people who have lived and worked in China. And Nora can maybe give you more details about the process for identifying the biographies in Wikipedia. And the last uh, core of materials are archival materials. So this means that we, we also welcome manually created data sets from archives and other non-digitized sources. So this is a work in progress, and uh, I, I have to say that new data is regularly uh, imported into the databases as we process new sources. So I will now leave the floor to Nora. Uh, I can't see her, but I hope she's somewhere here. Thank you, Sisu. <laughs> so um, I will continue, and I will talk about the architecture of the uh, of the sister databases MCDB and the LM database. They both follow the same structure. So it's consist, each consists of 12 tables and they are all structured around one aspect, which is beautifully highlighted on the PowerPoint, which is person. Uh, aside from person, we also describe uh, different entities, like different things like locations and organizations that we also split up in institutions and companies. And there are, uh, next to describing like entities, we also have tables that uh, map relationships. And one of those types of tables is like the education events, the position events. And lastly, I want to bring attention to another type of uh, table that we have. Uh, which is like observations or like uh, company statistics that add an extra information. But in case of observation, it's mostly like unstructured data. Uh, in the next slide, we will give an overview. Yeah, uh, Cecil, can you help me out? Yeah, yeah sorry. sorry, I have some trouble with, uh, sorry, <laughs> it's fine. No problem. <laughs> So um, at, uh, this is uh, the state of how much we have collected so far for both of the databases. And you can, I want to bring just the detail to the location table, which yeah, compared to other tables doesn't collect much data, but that's because it's, uh, we will integrate well, we will soon integrate another database, which is like the modern China geospatial database into uh, MCB and LMDB to uh, enrich. And not only do we collect, uh, like, uh, collect information, but in the next slide, we also see, um, I'd say different, uh, like our partners, well, our database partners for data linking, because of course, 
we can only describe people uh, with the sources that we have, with the template that we have. So it's also enriching if we can also identify people in other databases that would help the user to look them up uh, in other databases. And uh, yeah, so that brings us to the next slide. Uh, our database, uh, we re for, uh, for like storing all this data and managing the data, we rely on Eurist uh, content management system that has like a lot of good features, like not only like curating the data, but also allows us to create web interfaces and other uh, features uh, like exporting the data in various uh, formats and so on. If you wish to learn a little bit more about the structure of our database, I have to refer you in the next slide, uh, our uh, documentation, which can give you more explanations about the tables and how to use the MCDB uh, better. And like in the next slide, I will, uh, uh, this is like the, how to say the content management system that we use, uh, we rely also on the human services. And the face in the yeah, video is Ian Johnson, who is the face behind uh, the marvelous URIS database. And so I think at the end, we will... I will stop uh, sharing, okay? Yeah, I will, um, it, uh, I will show you concretely how to navigate our database and what and like help you to understand the possibilities, uh, what you can do uh, with our database. So I'll bring you, I share my screen. Can everybody see it? Okay, perfect. Um, so like depending on uh, before, of course, that you uh, to say uh, can access our database at the moment, you still have to, make an account so uh, there is like a guidance to do that uh, and if you have made the account you face this uh, interface now there are depending on the identity of your account you can do managing account or publishing a user interface but most importantly is it uh, exploring the database so what you can see here is uh, the explore menus in which you can browse the different entities that we have. But of course, I understand that like browsing through different uh, observations can be a bit tedious. So we have like, uh, URIS also allows to do search interfaces. Uh, like for example, I look up a record of Zion Pei and it will immediately produce the records that are associated with him. And as you can see, there are like different icons that denote like the different entities that are associated with like person, education events and position. To consult uh, like this record, you just have to click on it. And then you have like an overview uh, of the naming, the birth details, death details, professional and social life, as well as the sources that we have used to uh, uh, say, gather this information, as well as the different identifiers that you can use in other databases. And now if you want to, how to say, search a particular group in the database, I can imagine something along the lines that if you're interested in certain graduates um, of Stanford University, like there is a filter that you can use. And it, uh, if you take time to learn about the system of our data, like how we organize our database, you can, I'd say, easily identify that you want to have the person records and from the person records, like the education event that is associated with it. And of course that education event is tied into an institution. 
that is uh, how to say Stanford, then you will automatically how to say come to it. And if you of course want to uh, how to say be more specific, like doctorates and everything, you can add more and more parameters towards it in the filter builder. Now, what you can do with the, um, how to say, uh, with your results is you can export it in different, like in the different formats that you want, which is very easy. And you can decide whether, what type of information do you want if you don't really care about, how to say, the different names that a person can have, but you're interested in the birth date that uh, those options are available. Um, so next to if you want to import, if you want to stay in Eurist to, uh, to deal with this data, you can always save your filter that allows, uh, I'd say, to keep a record of your queries. Um, and then you can advance to do other stuff. Now, in my case, I will leave the Stanford students and I, I will go to my favorite filters, which is like the Chinese students in Belgium. Now, um, if you have like information that is uh, attached to a location, then it's possible to use that information to visualize it uh, on the map. So here it is. So URIS allows for two types of uh, inf like uh, information to um, visualize, which is like the place as well as the time, as the timeline um, that you can see at the bottom, like to have uh, an idea. And it also allows you to zoom in to see the details. And if you are wondering about like, uh, if you want to, how to say, have a basic analysis, although like you can always export the data and do more sophisticated form of analysis, but Eurist can offer in the cross tabs here, uh, a way to do a quick, uh, to say a visualization of the results. So for example, if I'm interested in my data set, uh, how, much, uh, how much people are in a certain period for uh, the uh, date of birth. So uh, for example, you take the variable date of birth and then it will calculate very fast. And it has like a string that allows you to revisit this query later on. Now, um, so I think if you are a little bit, how to say, annoyed by it and said like, yeah, I'm, it's all fun, but I am only interested in the Hubei students, then it is possible to, how to say, create, like to do a query on the subset that you already have. So it's like an advanced feature. And then you can, take time to, how to say, to write, how to say, uh, to look up those students. So give me a moment. <laughs> uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So for example, then this, then also this cross step will adapt to what you have tried to uh, find in the subset. Now, I hope with this, yeah, very bumpy, but uh, how to say, uh, with this bumpy tutorial that you have an idea, like the work that uh, we have done so far, as well as it makes you understand how to navigate our interface. I hope it is all clear. And if there are questions, well, the floor is open, I suppose. I will stop sharing, yeah. Yeah, thanks very much for your presentations.